Dear students, welcome to EPG Part Sala. I am Professor P. Baskaradi, Department of Ancient Indian History, Culture and Archaeology, Sri Venkateswara University, Tirupati. The present module of the course Outlines of Indian History, we are going to learn about an important moment in the history of freedom struggle that is Salt Satyagraha and Civil Disobedience Moment. In the previous module, we have discussed about the non-cooperation movement, which was an important new beginning in the national movement under the leadership of Gandhi and we have discussed the several programs of the non-cooperation and the method of non-violence. But due to the Chauri Chora incidents, that movement was suspended temporarily. Between 1922-1930, the national movement was in low profile. Once again, the national movement began overwhelmingly rapidly with the program of Salt Satyagraha and Civil Disobedience Movement. The present module is aimed to discuss the background to start the Civil Disobedience Movement, Salt Satyagraha or Dhani Satyagraha, what is its significance, history in the National Movement, how it paved the way for the National Movement, the main features, programs and impact of the Satyagraha and Civil Disobedience Movement and how the Civil Disobedience Movement came to an end. With these objectives, let us start up our discussion on what is the significance of the Civil Disobedience Movement at first to understand its objectives and its importance. In all the sterling annals of our freedom movement, few movements are as dramatic, inspiring and significant. The Civil Disobedience Movement was an important non-violent movement led by Mahatma Gandhi against certain laws and the commands of the ruling British government to its redressal. Originally, it was started with Salt Satyagraha, also known as Sant Dandi Satyagraha, by Mahatma Gandhi on 12th March 1930. This program was continued in various levels. At one level, the march was intended to protest against the nefarious provisions of the salt tax imposed by the British. But there was another level that had deeper, more profound implications and gave the event a unique significance. The Dandi March, in effect, was the spark that ignited the flames of the freedom movement and caused the idea of mass civil division to spread like wildfire across the nation. With this discussion in brief about the significance of the civil disobedience movement and Sal Satyagraha, now we may connect our discussion to the last uh, module which we stopped there, which it serves as a background to understand the civil disobedience movement. Regarding the background is concerned, you know that the withdrawal of non-cooperation movement in February 1922 caused frustration among the most of the congressmen. Thus, the Congress leaders expressed vigorously and divided into groups. The nationalists in the Congress divided into particularly pro-charges and no charges. Those who are supporting the earlier programs, they are called as no charges and the others who tried to, in different way, they are called as pro-charges. With the exception of few, majority of the congressmen supported boycott of councils and concentrated on the constructive activity. Meanwhile, an important development took place as a measure of the government to suppress the national movement, one among that is Simon Commission. The government of Britain appointed the Simon Commission on 8th, 1927 to report on fitness of India 
for reforms and further extension of parliamentary democracy. There was a chorus of protest by all Indians against the appointment of an all-white seven-member Indian Statutory Commission. The Congress met at Madras in December 1927 and resolved to boycott the commission because the ground was that it had been appointed without any Indian to represent the grievances of the people. Thus, the Simon Commission is also paved the way for a large scale products started by the national leaders. Thus, the boycott began on February 3, 1928, when the Simon Commission landed at Bombay. The Congress confronted the Commission wherever they went to India and hartals, rallies, processions, black flag demonstrations became common in all the places. They floated the popular slogan, Go Back Simon, was raised everywhere of the country. When this type of hartals were conducted in various parts of the country against the Simon Gabak, the government also started repressionary measures to suppress the revolt. The police dealt with protesters very severely. Lati charges were frequent where several people were injured in the Lati charges. Particularly in Lahore, Lala Lajpat Rai was hit on the chest and ultimately died a few years after the incidents. Similarly, in Lucknow, Jawaharlal Nehru and Govind Balapant were also beaten by the police where they were also injured. Thus, when the Simon Commission was appointed and the Simon Commission visited the India, there was a large scale protest. Even after the return of Simon Commission, the government also uh, the government continued the similar type of measures to suppress the revolters and punish the persons who involved in the protests. Particularly regarding the post Simon Commission incidents include the award of death sentence to Bhagat Singh, Rajguru, Sukhdev in the Lahore conspiracy case. Jitendra Nath Das martyrdom after a 64 day hunger strike in jail for reforms is also one. The failure of talks with Viceroy Lord Irwin relating to assurance that India would be granted full domain status before the round table conference in London. This created a profound stir and caused a deep unrest in the minds of the people. As a result, after these incidents, the Congress met at Lahore under the presidency of Jawaharlal Nehru and resolved on December 31st, 1929 to demand for Purna Swaraj or complete independence. This was an important beginning for the further progress of national movement. Jawaharlal Nehru, after this uh, resolution, on the midnight of the same day, came out in a solemn position to the banks of the river Ra Ravi and uh, hoisted the tricolor flag of India's independence in the presence of a Mammoth gathering. He proclaimed that it would be a crime against man and God to submit any longer to British world. Thus, the result of the Lahore session is the Lahore session changed the Congress creed from dominion status to complete independence. This was an important beginning for getting a Purna Swaraj to the Indians. This inspiration set the stage for the launching of Salt Satyagraha and Civil Disobedience Movement. Soon after the Lahore session, the Working Committee of the Congress met on January 2nd, 1930 and resolved to take the steps to implement the Congress resolution of boycotting of councils. They also decided to observe January 26, 1930 as the day of Purna Swaraj or complete independence which became the first independence day of India. Still, we are observing January 26 as the first independence day. The people also enthusiastically participated in the celebration of Purna Swaraj which they plotted by the Congress on that day by organizing meetings, processions, unfurling of the national flag at various places 
and reading out the pledge of complete independence on january 26 1930 thus encouraged by the popular response to the celebrations of purna swaraj gandhi felt it a ripe time for further action and further progress of the national movement the congress working committee also met at sabarmati in gujarat during 14th and 16th february 1930 and passed a resolution authorizing gandhi to start civil disobedience movement against this background gandhi ji un under the authority of the congress took the first step and launched the civil disobedience movement known as salt satyagraha with this background and discussion on the developments that took place after the non cooperation movement and various factors that lead to the starting of civil disobedience and salt satyagraha and authorization of congress to gandhi to start this movement now we may shift our discussion about the origin of the civil disobedience movement its objectives how the gandhi promoted the non violence movement in the form of salt satyagraha and civil disobedience movement regarding the beginning of the civil disobedience movement is concerned the political atmosphere of india grew more tense after the declaration of swaraj by the congress in the year 1929 gandhi in one of his letters to viceroy placed the following demands to solve among the many prohibition of all intoxicants change of ratio between the pound and the rupee reduction in the revenue rates abolition of salt tax reduction in military expenditure reduction in civil administrative structure imposition of custom duty on foreign cloth acceptance of postal reservation bill release of all political prisoners who were arrested in the previous uh, course of protests the abolition of criminal investigation department issue of form licenses to the citizens of self defense with this demands gandhi sent a letter to the british government and at the same time he mentioned that he declared that if these demands were not accepted then he would start the civil disobedience movement but when the gandhi wrote letter to the viceroy with the objectives and demands the viceroy paid no attention towards the demands of gandhi thus the congress working committee therefore authorized gandhi to start the civil disobedience movement on march 2 1930 gandhi wrote to the viceroy about the decision to start satyagraha on viceroy's reply gandhi in his remarks he said on bended knees i asked for bread i have received a stone in set then gandhi decided to launch the civil disobedience movement by defying the salt laws of the government at dandi thinking that salt being an essential article to all the masses could be roused into action thus the salt satyagraha or dandi satyagraha were began now we may shift our discussion to what is salt satyagraha when it started where it started what is the efforts and its results the place gandhi selected as the site for his symbolic breaking of the provision of the hated salt tax was dandi a seaside village in gujarat on 12th march 1930 gandhi along with 78 selected followers left the sabarmati ashram on foot reached dandi on 5th april 1930 after a 240 mile march on the early morning of 6th april 1930 he walked into the waters of the seas picked up a handful of salt violating the salt law and thus inaugurated the salt satyagraha and the civil disobedience movement the salt lifted by gandhi was sold to the highest bidder for rs 1600 which went to a public fund thus the event attracted enormous publicity and the country was electrified after the dandi satyagraha gandhi 
decided to further progress of the civilization movement and uh, he taken up various programs in all parts of the country and its wide propagation. On 9th April 1930, Gandhi formulated a program for the movement. According to this, every village was to fetch or manufacture contraband salt. Women were to picket liquor shops and foreign cloth dealers and also he urged the young and old should spin cloths. The students were to leave government schools and colleges as a protest of and as a part of the civil disobedience program. The government also resigned their jobs. It was also added in the program. In, with this object is Gandhi in his message said that if this was done, Purna Swaraj will knock at our doors. With this message, the law breaking movement or civil disobedience movement spread like wildfire throughout the country. Have a look at the participation of various groups in the program of the civil disobedience movement. Picketing of taddy and liquor shops, boycotting of foreign goods, promotion of Qadar and removal of untouchability also became the main programs of the civil disobedience movement. When the movement gone into the peak stage where Hartals and uh, uh, protests were doing in various parts of the country against the civil disobedience, Gandhi was arrested on 4th May 1930 and sent to Yarwada jail. The news of Gandhi's detention spurred tens of thousands more to join in the Satyagraha. The march on the salt works went ahead as planned on May 21st led by Sarojin Naidu and many of some 2,500 peaceful marches were attacked and beaten by police. The most striking part in the campaign was played by women after the arrest of Gandhi belonging to all sections of the society. Even the aged Kasturi Gandhi and Mrs. Motilal Nehru also participated in the picketing programs. The Congress Working Committee also met at Allahabad in June and recommended in its resolution continuation of the civil disobedience movement after the arrest of Gandhi also. The Viceroy promulgated drastic ordinances to counteract picketing, non-payment of taxes, tampering with the loyalty of government servants. Another important development during the period of civil disobedience movement was the reaction of high-profile public servants against the lottery charge on satyagrahis and firings at particularly Peshawar and other places. In this regard, we have to mention Kattamanchi Ramalingardi, the first Vice Chancellor of Andhra University, resigned his Vice Chancellorship as a protest against the Lati charge. One more important aspect of the civil disobedience is the participation of local bodies. The local bodies also extended their support to the civil disobedience movement as in the places like Madras Presidency. For this, they employed several methods such as passing of resolutions, congratulating persons who have convicted and sent to jail, hoisting of the national pack over buildings belonging to the local bodies, issue of instructions to their employees to wear Qadar and conduct propaganda and advocating the use of Qadar. National songs should be sung daily in the schools under, the, under their control and prayers offered therein for leaders. Organization of professions of the student carrying the national flag, it is also preserved. Permission or encouragement of the employees to take part in the movement. For association with the movement, the local bodies had to receive the wrath of the government because for their involvement in the movement, the government took stern action against the local bodies and placed them under blacklist. However, it did not deter them from the national movement. Instead, it further strengthened the cause of the freedom movement. Then another program is boycott of election, which already it received great impetus and uh, uh, public mandate from the non-cooperation time onwards. There was a boycott of elections to the province councils even during the time of civil disobedience movement, particularly in Madras presidency. So far we discussed about 
the civil disobedience movement its beginning its course programs and support by various sections of the movement and it is the fact that the civil disobedience movement gone its peak stage however the then british government also not in quiet they have taken several measures in several ways to suppress the movement now we may shift our discussion to discuss briefly what are the measures taken by the british government to suppress the civil disobedience movement the reaction of the government against the ongoing national struggle was full of fire and fury ordinances were passed and all sorts of restrictions were imposed jails were filled with congressmen and women lati blows rained upon the demonstrators the government passed a press ordinance act on april 27th 1930 and replaced the press act of 1910 the result was that 67 newspapers and 55 printing presses were closed down because the press is the key role where it propagating the ideals of the national leaders to the up to the roots of the society and also besides that the leaders like gandhi nehru and uh, azad were arrested several organizations were banned to prevent the involvement of these associations in the program several local organizations were also banned including the congress party and its district associations as a result the congress working committee which met on january 21st 1931 estimated government imprisoned 75000 innocent men and women and adopted numerous brutal measures like lottery charges firing looting of property burning of houses prohibiting meetings and processions and declaring congress and allied associations as unlawful in spite of this sub suppression measures the movement continued with vigorous further also besides the above suppression measures the british government also followed a compromise policy to suppress the rebel accordingly they appointed irwin commission to make a pact with gandhi and national leaders now we may shift our discussion what is the motive of the irwin and what are the provisions uh, that concluded in the gandhi irwin pact its results we can discuss now regarding the gandhi irwin pact is concerned the government called a round table conference in the year 1930 in london but however the congress did not join in it in order to make sure that the congress would participate in the second conference lord irwin also called another round table conference known as second round table conference gandhi with a fresh hope went to england to attend the second rebel conference held in december 1931 as the congress representative along with saronjiri naidu here also it failed to reach an agreement either constitutionally or on communal representation no settlement could be arrived in the conference it is known that gandhi's demand for full self government was rejected by the second round table conference then gandhi returned as a dissolution man on 28th december 1931 in the meantime lord irwin was replaced by lord wellington as a viceroy in india he reversed the policy of his predecessors and adopted several measures against the congress his effort to present the views of the congress to the newly viceroy wellington also yielded no results as a result and consequences the congress working committee met on january 1st 1931 and resolved to resume the civil disobedience movement including the non payment of taxes and thus the second phase of civil disobedience movement began once again on 4th january 1931 but it confined to picketing of liquor shops and a shop selling from foreign cloth organizing positions and demonstrations defying of salt laws etc naturally 
once again the government promulgated ordinances to kill the movement all kinds of associations were also banned several congressmen were arrested and sentenced even gandhi was also arrested once again on 4th january 1932 nehru valbhai patel sarojini naidu abul kalam and several others were arrested and sent to jail about 80000 people were arrested in the first of four months the important thing is the students also took active part in the civil disobedience movement in spite of warning that people of educational institutions should not take part in any form of political activities while these things are going on the premier of britain macdonald announced on 10th august 1932 the communal award or separate electorate for harijans treating the harijans as a minority community this uh, communal award it intending to separate them from the hindus as a part of the british divide and rule policy for weakening the national movement when the communal award was floated by the britishers gandhi resented it and started his famous unto death fast on 20th september 1932 the news of the fast was spread like a wildfire throughout the country everyone including people belonging to the depressed classes condemned the award conducted meetings and passed resolutions in favor of the joint electorate gandhi ji is fast against the award evoked a great excitement in every place of the country as a result the one more development is pune pact in the next course of time after prolonged negotiations with b r ambedkar and others a settlement was called pune pact was arrived on 24th september 1932 to suspend this type of vibrations among the hindus a common electorate of all the hindus was agreed and 148 seats were reserved for harijans in provisional legislature instead of providing in the premier award the pact was accepted by the british government also thereupon gandhi broke his fast and the peace prevailed in the country besides that gandhi also after the pune pact he has taken up the program of untouchability and its eradication after the pune pact as a awareness program the untouchability gandhi undertook an all india tour of 12500 miles traveling across the country mobilizing students men women and even children against the untouchability he also attempted several programs to improve the position of the low born communities thus gandhi's contribution to eradication of untouchability was considerable it also added as one of the programs of the national movement now we may shift our discussion the end of the civil disobedience movement and its effect with gandhi's concentration on the harijan uplift there was a decline in the tempo of the second phase of the civil disobedience movement and after an informal meeting at pune on 12th july 1933 the mass civil disobedience movement was discontinued the congress working committee also met at patna in 1934 may and decided to suspend the movement from 20th may 1934 and thus the movement came to an end throughout the country with this discussion on the civil disobedience movement and sal satyagraha i hope that you may have understood what is the salt satyagraha and the civil disobedience movement how it was began what factors contributed for the starting of the civil disobedience movement and how it spread all over the country and its results and also we have discussed about various measures adopted by the government to suppress or to compromise now the core points which it resulted we can conclude as a summary the movement had a great mass base than the earlier one it drew into its fold 
even the patients, women, students and others. It had even advanced the economic nationalism. It also promoted social reform, particularly among the Harijans and it paved the way for further progress of the national movement in the name of Quit India, which it can be discussed in the next module. For more details, please see the e-text and also other components of the model. Thank you.